Hello friends, I'm Himanshu Jain, I'm one of the co-founders of the Wall Street School. We've been teaching financial modeling and valuations for more than 12 years now. Of late, we've been getting a lot of requests from the students asking us to make a detailed video on the most important questions which are asked in a financial modeling job interview. So what we did was, we collated and analyzed thousands of questions which have been asked to our students in the various investment banking interviews when they have appeared for. So in this video, we are going to cover those questions with a brief answers in a structured manner. So let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. So today we will be addressing one of the most important and most interesting topics and that is about the most favorite questions that are asked in financial modeling interviews so without any further ado let's get started so first of all friends we must understand the various categories of interviews questions that can happen so as far as financial modeling domain is concerned you can be tested on technical questions as well as personal questions when it comes to the technical questions, the idea behind the interviewer's mind is basically to test your knowledge of the domain, your understanding of financial modeling skills. And the personal questions are there to test your soft skills and your personality. Well, for this video, we will be particularly focusing upon the technical questions so that we can address the most important areas when it comes to the technical questions. So let's get started on that. So the first question that we have is what is financial model and for what purpose it is used? So first thing that we can answer here is what exactly financial modeling is all about. So friends, as we know a financial model is primarily a structure that we create on MS Excel and that helps us make financial decisions. So the agenda of creating a financial model is always a decision that we want to address. And in order to address that decision in a proper structured manner, we use the technique of financial modeling. So what kind of decisions does financial modeling support? Well, any decision that needs to be made in the field of finance and investments can be supported with the help of financial modeling. Like, for example, we talk about financial planning. That is, planning your finances. And this can be applicable for an individual as well as a business. For all these cases, we can use financial modeling techniques to plan the finances better like how to raise the funds, what should be the sources of raising the funds and how those funds should be deployed into the various projects of the company. Another area in which we can use financial modeling can be valuations. And we do valuations of all the assets, be it the stocks or the bonds or real estate or any other business. Everything has a value that we can determine with the help of various valuation techniques and for that we can use financial modeling. Then comes project analysis. Let's say there is a business who is thinking about pursuing a particular project for the further expansion and growth of the business. Well, we can analyze that project, look into its best case, worst case scenario and then decide whether investing our funds into that particular project would be a good idea for the business or not. Then of course, the merger and acquisition deals are also supported with the help of financial modeling. Every M&A deal has to be decided upon the valuation of the business in concern and a deal has to be cracked from both the buying party and the selling party side. And for all these decision makings, we again use financial modeling for that. Then comes debt raising and capital allocation. All these decisions can be backed up by the process of financial modeling. So friends, let's move forward with our next question. So the next question that can be asked in financial modeling interviews is 
walk me through the process of financial modeling so the objective of financial modeling should be first clear in our mind that is the purpose for which we are preparing this financial model the particular decision that we are trying to address once that objective is clear well we can start working upon our financial model and first thing first we need to get to the historical financial data of the company that is the income statement the balance sheet and the cash flow statement of the company which will further help us do the projections now as far as the projections are concerned how do we approach that first thing that we do here is forecasting the revenues now revenues are the primary source of income the primary source of income for the business right and therefore we must pay a lot of attention to get these forecasting with respect to the revenues right so first thing that we do is get our future revenues moving forward we get the forecasted income statement ready with us so revenues we already have we will use them in our income statement and all the other cost and expenses we will be forecasting and some cost will be relatable to revenues like the cost of goods sold etc that we can get with the help of our forecasted revenues but some cost need some other bookings like for example the depreciation expense would be linked to the fixed asset schedule the interest expense would be linked to the debt schedule so in order to get such depreciation and interest related expenses we need a different working to be prepared with respect to the fixed asset schedule and the debt schedule where we will be forecasting the future numbers with respect to the assets and the liabilities of the business and we will be using all this data to further get the depreciation and the interest expense that will be filled in the income statement now once this data is ready with us we can move forward and prepare the forecasted balance sheet so as part of the balance sheet the debt and the fixed asset will get from the fixed asset and the debt schedule itself and the rest assets and liabilities need to be forecasted and special attention need to be made with respect to the working capital forecasting part once the forecasting is ready with respect to the balance sheet we can move forward and prepare the forecasted cash flow statement and the cash balance that we'll get from the cash flow statement that will again travel back to the balance sheet so friends all these forecasting are interconnected even the debt schedule is dependent upon the cash flow statement so all these interlinked forecasted financial statements are prepared simultaneously and once these financial statements for the future are ready we can further use them for decision making as we had an objective in mind for preparing this financial model so in order to fulfill that objective we must do some valuations or analysis and then finally look at various scenarios with respect to the results that we are getting so that we can understand the best case possibility that can happen in the future and the worst case possibility that can happen in the future and finally make a conclusion and present everything in the form of proper decision that we made through this process right so that is how we can build a financial model so let's move forward and address our next question so the next question is what in your opinion makes a good financial model or what are the best practices that we can use in financial modeling so friends as we know we are preparing the financial models on excel so the first thing that we should do is use the microsoft excel properly by deploying the various shortcuts and formulas and have a comfort working upon excel the second thing that we can do is have a proper 
proper logical flow of the model when it comes to forecasting or analysis everything should flow with the proper logic then comes the third point and that is about the formatting so the formatting of a model should be done in a very professional manner and everything should be consistent throughout the model like for example the color coding can also be defined using very professional colors like for example we can use the inputs as blue color we can have our formulas as black colored and then we can have our assumptions in the red color and we can follow the industry practices with respect to the most professional and consistent way of formatting our financial model and last but not the least we should try and make the financial model as easy and simple to understand and it should be flexible as well what do i mean by flexible well in that sense we should be able to change our inputs and get the outputs in various scenarios that can help us do some scenario management and sensitivity analysis towards the end so that we can look into the best case and worst case scenario and then make a call on the decision that was in our hand so these can be a few best practices that we can deploy in financial modeling so let's move forward with our next question so the next question is from where do you get the historical data of the company's financials so friend as we know after laying down our objective the first thing that we require is to get the historical data of the company so what all sources can be there the first source of data can be the annual reports of the companies the second would be the corporate filings for for example the annual reports that are issued in us are in the form of 10k and quarterly reports are issued in 10q then after the reporting part we can also refer to the various aspects of the annual reports for some insights like for example the management discuss discussion and analysis part of our annual reports the earnings conference call report that the company has to do every quarter after issuing the quarterly results the conference that it holds with the analyst community it also gives us a lot of insights about how the company has performed during the quarter and what is the outlook of the management for the coming quarters and years then we can also refer to some external party resources like other equity research reports and some news articles as well but the prime importance should be given to the internal sources that is the reports and the filings that the company has done so let's move forward with our next question then so friends the next question is how do you forecast the revenues of the company well friends we know that revenue is one of the most important items to be forecasted because it is the prime source of income for the business so how do we do the forecasting of revenues let's see the first thing that we must keep in mind is that the revenue has to be industry specific right it can be a services based industry or a manufacturing industry well revenue forecasting can differ from industry to industry one simple approach that we can adopt here is to be able to see the overall historical growth trend and on the basis of that we can go ahead and do the forecasting for the revenues but that is going to be very very simple approach the more precise and the more comprehensive approach can be that first we divide the business into the various segments of products that the business deal in this is the various product line or geographies that the company is in relation to and then once we have defined these various segments we can go ahead and do the projections with respect to the price per unit and then the projections with respect to the volume growth that we are expecting within the various segments and the price and the volume data will further help us get the revenues of the company for the future right guys 
so friends let's move forward with our next question then the next question is that if you have to use one statement to review the overall health of a company which statement would you use and why so here we have to talk about the most important financial statement so one of the most underrated financial statement yet one of the most important ones would be the cash flow statement that helps us understand the cash movement what are the sources of cash for the business and what are the uses of cash for the business these are actually the most important questions and every business should be able to track down these questions because at the end of the day in order to grow and expand further every business needs cash and definitely a cash rich company will have better prospects than a company who is on the verge of insolvency so in order to keep a track and control and improve the cash flows of the company we must keep a track of the cash flow statement so what all things are part of the cash flow statement well we divide our cash flow statement into three primary areas the first is the cash flow from operations that help us understand what are the cash inflows and outflows due to operations then comes our second area and that is about cash flow from investing activities well this area primarily tells us about our cash inflows and outflows which are happening due to the movement in the non current assets let's say the company purchased some building or furniture well that's a non current asset that is going to provide long term benefit to the business and therefore any inflow and outflow due to such long term asset that are going to provide long term benefit to the business is concerned well all the inflows and outflows related to such activities are classified under the cash flow from investing activities then comes the third one that is cash flow from financing activities which particularly talks about the cash inflows and outflows that are happening due to the financing activities of the business that is particularly related to the capital structure of the business so any changes happening in the capital structure that is debt and equity primarily any changes happening there any inflow and outflow due to these changes will be reflected in the cash flow from financing activities so to sum it up cash flow from operations particularly talks about the inflows and the outflows from operations investing activity particularly talks about the changes in the non current assets leading to inflows and outflows in the business and the cash flow from financing activities particularly talks about the changes in the capital structure which further lead to inflows and outflows in the business so out of these three activities what do you think is the most important one well yes the most important of these three activities would be our cash flow from operations this has to be strong positive and growing because this is the source of inflows for us that we want to sustain and grow in the long run because our operations should be good enough to take care of any requirement that come because of maybe the non current assets or maybe the capital structure in the form of debt repayment we should be able to generate enough inflows from our operations to take care of all the requirements of the business at least in the long run if not in case of a startup so this was about the cash flow statement which is one of the most important statements when it comes to a business so guys let's move forward and address the next question so the next question that we have is what are free cash flows and how do we project them so first of all addressing the first question that is what are free cash flows well free 
कैश फ्लो प्राइमरिली मीन्स एनी कैश फ्लो विच इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल द कमिटमेंट सो एनी कैश फ्लो दैट इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल द कमिटमेंट कैन बी रेफर टू एज द फ्री कैश फ्लो एंड इट इज फ्रीली अवेलेबल फॉर द कैपिटल प्रोवाइडर्स ऑफ द बिजनेस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द डिफरेंट कैपिटल प्रोवाइडर्स ऑफ द बिजनेस वी कैन फर्दर क्लासिफाई आर फ्री कैश फ्लो इन टू टू कैटेगरीज वन वुड बी द फ्री कैश फ्लो टू फॉर्म दैट इज एफ सी एफ एफ एंड द अदर वुड बी फ्री कैश फ्लो टू इक्विटी दैट इज एफ सी एफ ए सो वेन इट कम्स टू एफ सी एफ एफ दैट इज फ्री कैश फ्लो टू फॉर्म इट बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंट द कैश फ्लो विच इज अवेलेबल टू ऑल द इक्विटी एंड द डेट होल्डर्स वेर एज वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एफ सी एफ ई इट रिप्रेजेंट द कैश फ्लो विच इज अवेलेबल ओनली टू द इक्विटी होल्डर्स सो ऑल द कमिटमेंट दैट इज द कॉस्ट कमिटमेंट एंड द री इन्वेस्टमेंट कमिटमेंट ऑफ द बिजनेस हैज बीन टेकन केयर ऑफ वेल कैलकुलेटिंग द फ्री कैश फ्लो सो री इन्वेस्टमेंट कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन कैन बी द शॉर्ट टर्म री इन्वेस्टमेंट दैट इज इन टू द वर्किंग कैपिटल ऑफ द बिजनेस दैट इज बेसिकली द करेंट एसेट माइनस द करेंट लाइबिलिटीज दैट इज द नेट करेंट एसेट द सेकेंड री इन्वेस्टमेंट इज फॉर द लॉन्ग टर्म विच कंप्राइजेज ऑफ आर कैपिटल एक्सपेंडिचर इन टू द नॉन करेंट एसेट्स ऑफ द बिजनेस विच कैन बी द टेंजिबल एसेट एंड द इनटेंजिबल एसेट्स राइट so after we have taken care of all the commitments be it in the form of the cost commitment or the reinvestment commitment everything has been taken care of then we arrive at the free cash flow if it is available for both the equity and the debt holder we'll call it fcff that is free cash flow to form if it is available only to the equity holders we'll call it free cash flow to equity so friends now understand how we can calculate them so when it comes to the fc ff calculations we start from earnings before interest and tax and make them after tax because we wanted to go before interest because nothing has been paid to the debt holders and the equity holders yet because we are calculating free cash flow to form that is the cash which is free and available for the debt and the equity holders so nothing yet has been paid to the debt holders and the equity holders so we have subtracted all the cost except interest and we have also subtracted the tax expenses by taking ebit that is earnings before interest and tax and then multiplying it with 1 minus the tax rate that will give us the net operating profit after tax that we can call as nopat once we have this net operating profit after tax we'll add back depreciation and amortization because one it, it is a non cash expense and second it is a provision that we are making for the investment into our assets in the future so we are adding it back and then we are subtracting the current capital expenditures that we have done and then any non cash working capital investments that we have done and the working capital has gone up that will also get decreased here and what we will be left with is fc ff that is the free cash flow which is available to the firm that includes both the debt holders and the equity holders and then comes the fc fe calculation so when it comes to the fcfe calculation we can start with net profit because debt holders have been paid we are just looking at the cash flow which is available to the equity holders so the interest has already been paid so the interest adjustment that we did in the prior calculation would not be required here we can simply start with the net profit in which we have already subtracted all our cost including interest and taxes then we add back our depreciation and amortization just like we did in fcff case and then we subtract our capital expenditures 
and we will subtract any working capital investment that we have done and last but not the least we will add back the net debt borrowed in order to get the fcfe so friends this was about the top 7 questions that can be asked in financial modeling interview really hope that this video was of help to you in case of any questions you can comment down below the video and we would be happy to get in touch with you you can also get in touch with us over our website the wallstreet.com so see you in the next video thanks for watching take care and bye bye